Well, 2022 is almost over, and I think it's been a great year for me on YouTube, and I've really liked making these videos, I've learned a lot making these videos, and it's been great interacting with all the viewers here, and I've learned a lot from what you guys have commented on these videos. So, thanks for watching. One thing I wanted to do was to follow up on a lot of the different videos I made this year. I made quite a few different videos this year, and I just wanted to go over what's the status of those videos and if I'm still using that stuff I set up. Some stuff I set up for a video and then tear down, and some things like products I want to keep using. And I'm going to go over how well it's still working. So the first thing is the SSD drives. I did a couple of reviews on low-end cheap SSDs and wanted to see how they would do. This is a 256 gig 11 SSD. I believe I got it for a bit over 20 bucks. It's a QLC DRAM NIST drive. And I think about six months later, it's working with no issues. Same with the MoveSpeed SSD. I actually don't have it here because it's in my main desktop. It's been running about 24 seven with no issues and no major performance problems either. This drive is a little bit slow, but definitely not a huge issue and is usable for a basic system. I also have this used Samsung OEM drive. In this case, this is a PM981A. I've been using it quite a bit in different systems. No issues at all on this drive either. Moving on to some hard drives I looked at. I looked at a host managed SMR drive, which needed all this special software to get working. I actually have been using it ever since I made that video as kind of a basic NAS that I've been using board backup to copy files from my desktop to. It's been working just fine. I haven't had any major performance issues. My backups typically run at about 60 megabytes per second, but it's limited by the CPU of the server holding it, not the network connection or the hard drive, so the hard drive likely can do much more. I don't see any of the major SMR slowdowns that I would normally see on device managed drives. The other thing is that six terabyte drive that I soldered the SATA connectors on. It's still working in that system with no issues. I've been trying to not move it at all because I know that connector is very fragile, but the connector is still glued on and soldered on now. Another project I've been working on is doing some endurance testing on eight Keoxia BG4 SSDs. It's actually still going on right now because it's taking a whole lot of time to actually kill them. I have a total of eight drives. I have four that have been in progress, one that's probably dead, but seems to come back to life if I restart the system. And the four that are currently being written to all have over one petabyte of data. And this is a 256 gig SSD, so around 4,000 write cycles. Another weird thing I found out with these drives, they seem to limit at 255% for usage amount. So it'll kind of go for 100% used and say, now I'm almost done, and then it'll keep going to 255, and then it just stops there. Doesn't seem to have any other issues, hasn't reported anything in the smart data, and just keeps on writing data at roughly the same speed. While my fix for the Blue Ready AC200P seems like it helped it for a little bit, and unfortunately started having the same issue again a little bit later, and I was unable to continue charging it. I tried doing the same sort of fix and playing around with those things, but from what I could see, it just kept having the same issue. Luckily, thanks to one of the commenters on that video, I found out how to open a menu that would show me the voltages of every cell. And it was just reporting odd things. It was jumping around and my multimeter was reading a stable voltage, but this was going between maybe two and a half to four volts for a cell voltage. Looks like something wrong is happening here. I don't see anything visually wrong on this board and I don't know how to do board level repair to fix it. And unfortunately I cannot find any replacement boards on eBay. Let me know if you find anywhere of where to get these boards as I'd love to be able to use the rest of this unit. But for now, I'm kind of harvesting it for parts because I can't find any other reasonable solution. And here's the actual batteries inside the unit. I can see all the little monitoring leads to monitor the voltage of each of the individual cells. I can see the main power leads. And from my multimeter and looking at it, it seems to work correctly. I get about 1.85 kilowatt hours when measuring the capacity. And it seems to be a fully functional lithium ion phosphate battery bank. I plan to get my own BMS for it so I can just use it essentially as a 48 volt-ish battery. And luckily, I can also use the charger that came with the unit because it'll smartly charge at about eight amps all the way up to the max voltage, which I believe is about 58.4. And then once it is full, it will cut off power. Some of the other interesting boards I found inside the battery is this little wireless charging module. I can give it 12 volts, put my phone up to it, and it'll charge it wirelessly. I'd like to build it into something else as a project. I have this little USB charger it has that has four USB ports that I believe can charge up to three amps each and a 65 watt type C port. Let me know if you have any other ideas of how to use a board like this. So if someone's kind of hacked a protocol to make these boards do exactly what they want, but it looks like I have a few little charging boards to play with and a giant battery that I can use in a battery bank. 
I also did a video on making a Dell 5324 switch silent by putting a Noctua fan in, and it's been working just fine, making very little noise since then, no problems at all. Thanks for watching these videos over the last year. I hope you've enjoyed them. Let me know if you have any suggestions or comments or ideas in the comments below, as I'd love to kind of follow the ideas that you have. Otherwise, I'm probably gonna look at other new software, do a few more software tutorials, and just kind of play with hardware and see what I can get out of it, because I find it fun to do that sort of configuration. And I hope these videos help you with whatever configuration you're doing and how your stuff is set up. So thanks for watching. Have a good next year.